The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents... This is your FBI. This is your FBI. The official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. From time to time in their 30s and early 40s, most men and women ask themselves, what will I be doing when I am 65 years old? What are my chances of being 100% self-supporting when it's time to stop work? Well, that's largely up to you and the decision you make right now. One such opportunity for an important decision will be offered to you in our middle commercial. It tells about the Equitable Society's Independent 60s plan. This plan means exactly what it says. Financial independence for you in your 60s. Do you like that idea? Then please listen carefully to this important message from the Equitable Society coming in about 14 minutes. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Homicide. Its title, The Mountain Murders. From time to time, in its never-ending war against lawlessness, your FBI runs into a type of criminal who might be described as the cold-blooded killer. Others may murder in emotional fury or for self-protection. But this type kills on the slightest provocation, with the pitilessness of a rattlesnake embedding its fangs. He is utterly ruthless, an individual totally lacking in sympathy or imagination. The outlaw frontier days belong to this breed as does the modern racketeer. Psychologists say that such character can frequently be traced back to an unhappy childhood, devoid of affection. That is one reason why your FBI urges you to support youth movements and child guidance clinics in your area. With their help, cases like the one discussed in tonight's official FBI file can be kept down to a minimum. Tonight's file opens in a mountain shack located in a southern state. A lanky, raw-boned man sits on a chair tilted against the wall, his hat almost covering his eyes as he idly fingers his guitar. Near the window, a lean woman pushes her hair from her face and resumes patching a faded pair of jeans. Roy? Yeah? Back acres need plowing. Mm, sure do. Gonna get to him? Mm-hmm. When? Mm, as soon as I'm feeling up to it. That'd be very long? No telling. Grandpa, mind that dirt you're dragging in. Oh, the world's too clean anyway. Sure a wind coming up. <laughs> Gets to being strong enough, might blow them fellers away. What fellers? The ones stringing the wires. Roy, you said last week you made them quit. Thought they did. I seen two fellers in the South Field. South Field, you say? Yeah. You got my traps down there. I ain't telling you just to be jawing. Lucy, where'd you put my rifle? Where it's proper, in the closet. They was right close to where the fence needs mending. I'll find them. You got shells? Yeah. Enough to take care of both of them. Later that day, a construction gang is at work in a large open field a few miles from the mountain shack. A husky, bronze-faced man yells instructions to his crew. Get 
get that crane fixed and move it down. You men on the cats can roll, too. Pardon me. They said we'd find Joe Scott up here. That's me. Oh, well, I'm Jim Taylor, FBI. This is Agent Tommy Hart. Mr. Howdy. Scott. We were driving back to the city, Mr. Scott, when the office radioed us. They said you reported some shootings. That's right. And they have it on the government reservation? Yeah. What are the details? You see those steel towers up the hill? Uh, yeah. Once they're up, we string the wire along them. That's a two-man job. One man in the tower and one on the ground. I see. This afternoon, somebody shot the team working on number nine. The county hospital says they both might die. Where's number nine? Two miles up the hill. Any idea who did the shooting? Well, I suspect a local farmer. Oh? Last week, Bill Carter, one of our engineers, was up by the site of number nine. And a farmer came over and threatened him. He told Carter to stay off that part of the hill or there'd be trouble. Was that government land, too? Yeah. Carter explained it to him, but he said he wasn't going to have his traps ruined by a government or anybody else. Is Carter around now? Down the road away. Jim, how about me going to County Hospital and seeing the wounded man, huh? All right, Tommy. I'll interview Carter. Meet you later at the construction shack. Roy? Yeah? Need a hand carrying in the supplies. <sighs> Soon as I'm up. Get my tobacco? Uh-huh. Mighty grateful. Hell, went up a penny. Again? Yes. One week to the next. Things are costing more. Any talk at the store about the shootings? Mm-hmm. Yeah, guess we'll be having a visitor. Who's coming? Government man. Heard this fella from the power company come into the store and call the government. After hanging up, he said they were sending somebody. When? Today. Roy, maybe you better go hide. You can set yourself in that old cave I used a couple years back. Mm, ain't much for caves. I heard those government men be here today. Oh. Want us all to get rifles and try holding them off? No. <sighs> you going? Mm-hmm. As soon as I get my guitar. Carter? Yeah, Joe? Would you come here a minute? Yes, sir. This is Mr. Taylor of the FBI. Oh, how are you, Carter? Taylor. Mr. Scott here tells me you were threatened last week. Yeah, that's right. You know the man's name? Roy Warren. He lives in a shack across from Tower 9. Mm -hmm. Anybody else giving you any trouble? Oh, a few, but once they find out the lines won't hurt their farms or stock, they're satisfied. Yeah. What does this uh, Warren look like? Oh, I see. He's uh, over six feet, real thin. Mm -hmm. He's got uh, high cheekbones and black hair. Taylor, you shouldn't have any trouble recognizing him. Oh, I don't think so. Mr. Taylor, the men he shot were both good friends of mine, so if there's anything I well, can do... Well, not right now, thanks. Uh, Joe, I think I'll drive over and see Roy Warren. Who can that be? No idea. He ain't going away. <laughs> Might as well go see. Good evening. Sure is. Does Roy Warren live here? Yeah. I'd like to see him. Don't know as you can. No, why not? He ain't here. Who is it, Grandpa? Don't know myself. I'm a special agent of the FBI. Here are my credentials. This is Roy's wife. Oh. Well, Mrs. Warren, I'm looking for your husband. Roy joined up and gone into the army. Oh, how long ago? Three weeks to the day. Why'd you want to see him? Well, I've been told he shot two men working on the power lines. When? This morning. You can see for yourself how that can't be. Mm -hmm. Where's your husband's station, Mrs. Warren? Well, I got no notion. Roy ain't much hand for writing. Well, if he's in the army, I can locate him. 
Think you'll be getting to see him? I'm hoping to. Tell him me and Grandpa are both fit. I'll do that. Tommy. Yeah. Tommy, did you get anything down to the hospital? No, Jim, neither man's recovered enough to talk. Well, we got trouble at this end. Oh, what? I just learned that Carter got permission to take a couple of days off. Carter? Oh, that's the man I interviewed this morning. Oh, the one who gave you the idea on the farmer. That's right. Well, what's wrong with his taking time off? Well, he told the foreman he was going to go look for Warren himself. Oh, fine. I don't know why some people think that all you have to do on this job is have a pocket for your badge. Any idea where Carter headed? No, Tommy. But we better find Roy Warren before he does. She's been dry. Yeah. Hey, who's that? Where? Feller coming to us. He's a stranger. I'll fetch my gun. Never saw him around. Stand there, mister. Okay. What you want? Some water. Why? I'm thirsty. Plenty other places got wells. Just happened to be passing here. Where was you heading? Up the hill. I'm with the power company. And, uh, mister, you don't have to walk around with your gun anymore. That man's been captured. Who? The one who shot two of our men last week. You say they found him? Uh huh. He was identified by the men he shot. Turned out he came from up north. The law got him? Yeah. The well's out back of the house. Go get yourself a drink. Thanks very much. My horse needs shoeing. Yeah, I know. Well, can you do it now? Guess so. Where are you going? See Roy. from the power company come by today. Mm, talk to him? Mm-hmm. What do you want? Well, he give me and Grandpa some news. What kind? Said they caught the fella shot those men. Mm hmm? Told us he was from up north someplace. Well, what do you know? Means you can come on down home. Yeah. You just stay where you are. Roy, he's the one that told me. I guess it ain't true. Remember me, Warren? You warned me to stay away from that field. Yeah. Too bad you didn't listen to him. Those other two fellas never would have got shot. Get up, Warren. We're going down to the valley. What for? So I can turn you over to the police. You ain't hey, doing what? nothing. Grandpa. I got a gun, too, young fella. You were so busy following Lucy, you never thought to look around in back. Roy, what do you think we ought to do with him? Same thing we generally do. Yes. That's right. We will return in just a minute to tonight's exciting case from the official file of your FBI. But now, listen. Those are the check writing machines at the home office of the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Every month, right on the dot, those checks go out to members who have paid up their Equitable Independent 60s plan. They're checks that mean financial independence for life after you're 65 years old. And here's Mr. Frank Peterson 
who started one of these plans back in the late 1920s. You finished your payments last year, didn't you, Mr. Peterson? Yes, Mr. Keating. I've quit work, and I'm here to prove that life can begin at 65. In other words, Mr. Peterson, you're now cashing in on the three freedoms that go with an independent 60s plan. First, freedom from money worries and job worries. Financial independence. I've got some mighty fine children, Mr. Keating. But I'm glad I'll never have to move in on them and be a burden to them. Second, with an equitable independent 60s plan, you're free to live anywhere you please. We've taken a pretty little place down in the Valley of Virginia. And let me tell you, it's true what they say about Dixie. It's wonderful. Third, freedom to do the things you've always wanted to do. I've got a couple of bird dogs I'm training. Takes time, but I got plenty of that since I started getting checks on my independent 60s plan. A lot of my friends think I must have made a lot of money to retire like this, but they're wrong. You don't have to make a big salary to afford an independent 60s plan. That's a fact. You don't have to earn big money to begin an equitable independent 60s plan. Ask your equitable representative to explain why you probably have a big head start towards independent 60s because of your social security and the life insurance you already own. Often only a small amount of additional insurance is all that's required. A few dollars a week did it for me. Friends, why not profit by Mr. Peterson's experience? Phone your Equitable Society representative without delay. Or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Mountain Murders. Some of Special Agent Taylor's words, which you heard a few minutes ago, are so important that they warrant repetition. Speaking of Carter's ill-advised attempt to find Warren's hideout, Agent Taylor said, Why do some people think all you have to do on this job is have a pocket for your badge? While we may applaud Carter's motives and marvel at his courage, we can only condemn his foolhardiness bordering on stupidity in going after a criminal equipped only with good intentions and a gun. Your FBI takes this occasion to re-emphasize its oft-repeated advice. When a crime is committed, report it immediately to your local authorities. Then keep your hands off unless requested to do otherwise. Tonight's FBI file continues later that afternoon as Special Agents Taylor and Hart work with Foreman Joe Scott searching the mountainside. Taylor, where's that map? Uh, Tommy's got it. Yeah, here it is. Hold it up, Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. The pilot said he spotted Carter's Jeep there. Yeah. That's where we are now. Well, he might have been a little off. Yeah, that's true. I think we ought to keep moving, huh? Okay. How much more daylight, Joe? About two more hours. Wait. Look over there. That's Carter's Jeep. Yeah. Must have come off that cliff. Never saw one that cracked up. Well, if I'm right about the cliff, Carter should be around here close by. Come on, let's look. Joe, did you put any towers up on that cliff? Mm hmm. Well, then you know the road up there. How is it? Not really a road, Taylor. More of a trail, and it winds past the caves. Huh? Hundreds of them all over the face of the mountain. If Warren's in one, you'll never find him. Why not? Well, most of them are connected, like rooms in a railroad flat. Take an army to flush Wait a minute, out. hold it. Carter. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Hold them all. Easy. It's a bad head one. Mm-hmm. That doesn't look like one he'd get in a crash. You better get him to the doctor quick. I'm afraid it's too late for that. Carter's dead. Hello? Joe? Yeah? This is Hart. Can I speak to Taylor, please? Taylor, for you. It's your partner. Oh. Thanks, Joe. Hiya, Tommy. Hiya, Jim. I'm at the hospital. Both men died this afternoon. Uh, well, that's three for one. Uh, no word on them yet, huh? No, none, Tommy. 
I've been thinking about those caves up on the cliff. If Warren's up there, he knows he'll have to stay under for quite a while. Uh-huh. Well, to do that, he'll need food, probably canned food. That's true. I checked at the general store. Mrs. Warren shops there once a week. She's doing again tomorrow. How does that fit in? Well, she got her usual order last week. Now, if she takes extra rations this time, it'll mean Warren's hiding out in this area. Yeah, but, Jim, if we were right about Carter being ambushed after following her, they'll be doubly careful about that now. Yeah, but maybe we can do the job without trying to trail them. I'm having the office rush some special equipment out here. I can see that. Can do. Sure heavy. For Roy? No, his are out in the saddlebag. Uh. Roy's getting to be known. His picture's all over the village. Ain't no sense to that. Folks there know him now. Yeah, the power company's put up a reward. How much? Thousand dollars. Seems those two fellers he shot died. Thought they would. Yeah. Looks to be clouding up. It is. I better take my coat. Why are you going? Bring Roy's food. I'll stay clear of the trail. Yeah, best if you did. Tell Roy about his pictures. Oh, I sure will. He'll be real pleased. <laughs> Joe, move your chair over here next to Tommy's, will you? Okay. Slide around, Tommy. That does it. Now, you probably recognize this, Joe. It's an aerial photo of the East Slope. Mm-hmm. It was made before you put up those towers. Now, would you locate them for us? Can I mark the picture? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. The first one's here on top. Mm. And they string down this way. And how far apart, Joe? Quarter of a mile. Number two's here. Yeah. And this would be three. Well, that's all we'll need. Need for what, Taylor? Spotting. Tommy, suppose you climb Tower 1 up here. Yeah, sure, Jim. Joe, will you handle the middle one? Glad to. And I'll be up on number 3. Now, the minute either one of you see anybody heading up the hill, call it in. How? Those things in the corner are walkie-talkies. We'll show you how to work them, Joe. Okay. Each of us will have one of these copies of an aerial photo. Now, you see the way the picture's divided into squares? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And each square is numbered. Now, as you spot Mrs. Warren or the old man, you call in and tell me which square they're in, and I'll... Mark it here on the master map. I see. That way, even if we lose them for a while, we'll have a record of which way they've been heading. Joe, you better take these night glasses. Thanks. Now, anything else? Well, I've got a dozen men we could use, and they want to help. Well, just give them one instruction, please, Joe. Tell them nobody's to follow whoever leaves the Warren house. And, Joe, make that strong, will you? If the Warrens don't think they're being trailed, there's a good chance this will work. Okay, let's go. We'll show you how to use that walkie-talkie and then head for the towers. Come in, Tommy. The old man's just leaving the house. Check square 58. He's riding with both saddlebags bulging. It's probably Roy's food. Yeah. Approaching square 49. Check 49. He's headed into the brush. That line will bring him to the cave in square 14. Yeah. Over for now, Jim. Right, Tommy. Talk to you later. Taylor. Yes, Joe. He's in square 36. Check 36. That means he's double tracking. Uh huh. Making sure nobody's following this time. I'm losing him. He's moving into the woods. Tommy. Yeah, Jim. You see him? No. No, I'll call if I spot him again, Jim. Taylor. Yeah, Joe? Still no sign of him. I think I see him, Jim. Yeah, he's in square 28. Check 28. It's clear from there to the top. Okay, Tommy, I'll pick you up and we'll move in together. Sure am. Food's 
in the saddlebags. Come on. You like being up here, Roy? Mm-hmm. That's good, because it'll be home for quite a spell. Why? Those two fellas you shot, they died. Oh. The power company's real mad. They can get more men. They put up a thousand dollar reward. For me? Uh-huh. Say, Will, I clean forgot to ask you. About what? The turkey shoot. Who won it? The pike boy. Too bad I wasn't there. I can shoot better than him. Yeah, you proved that. <laughs> well, sounds like he's glad to see you. So am I. Mm -hmm. Don't move. Special agents of the FBI, you're both under arrest. Roy Warren and Will Cooper were tried and convicted in federal court of murder on a government reservation. Each received a sentence of life imprisonment. As you have heard, a physically close surveillance was impossible in this case. As you have also heard, Special Agents Taylor and Hart improvised with what materials were available to them and apprehended the criminals. That ability to improvise is one of the talents for which the men of your FBI have become justifiably famous. Famous throughout the world. No two cases are ever exactly alike. Probably for the simple reason that no two human beings are perfect duplicates. Therefore, each investigation calls for its own particular method. The need of law enforcement officers for so many different types of knowledge is what has elevated police work to the status of a profession. A profession devoted exclusively to the welfare of you, the American people. Now, two final questions on the cost of the Equitable Society's Independent 60s plan. Well, Mr. Keating, I've never looked into a plan of this type. I always figured they cost me more than I could afford. That's a mistake lots of men make. They overlook the fact that their Social Security and the life insurance they already own gives them a big head start towards Independent 60s. Another thing I'd like to know, are these plans flexible? If I'm earning more money a few years from now, can I increase the amount of my plan? Many equitable members do exactly that. After all, the amount of your Independent 60s plan is strictly up to you. Your equitable man takes into account both your present income and your future needs. He'll be glad to sit down with you at any time. Or send a postcard care of the station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, espionage. Its title, The Traitor. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious. And any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Harley Bear, Dick Crenna, Whitfield Connor, Sam Edwards, Jeanette Nolan, and John T. Smith. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The traitor on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for the adventures this is of Ozzy and Harry, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>